Grace and peace to you, United Church. Welcome to worship. 30th of April, it's nearly the end of the fourth month. I had my birthday this week, so it's been a, it's a lovely week um, of just turning another year older. Uh, we have the licensing of Pearl Chebika, the young student minister who's come to work at United Church and to, and to work, work broadly in the Presbyterian community here in Stellenbosch. And we're looking forward to the exciting year we're going we're gonna to have learning from her and learning together. Um, but uh, we also heading into May, there's uh, Pentecost at the end of May, look out for Pentecost Sunday. Our Sunday school's up and going really well, so I encourage you, if you haven't attended worship for a while with your children, come along and let them come to, to Sunday school. We also will be having family services again, first Sunday of every term. And uh, we're just going to celebrate our children because we love them and we, we want them to grow up knowing and loving the Lord Jesus Christ. They're doing the Gospel Project as a program. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing a whole generation of kids grow up to know and to love the Lord Jesus and to serve him in the church in Stellenbosch and beyond. And so join with us as we worship um, today and read the scriptures and talk about the calling of Matthew. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the scriptures. Thank you that we learn that we are yours and that you have called us. And it's not what we do, but what Jesus has done that counts. And so open the word to us and be with all those we love who have struggled in the recent weeks. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our reading this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 to 17. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Then John's disciples came and asked him, how is it that we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered, How can the guests of the bridegroom mourn while he is with them? The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. Then they will fast. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do people pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins will burst, the wine will run out, and the skin, wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. Here ends the reading. Amen. Let's pray. May the words of our mouths, the meditations of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, God our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Folks, last week we looked a little at the, the story of Jesus casting out the demons from the two men in the graveyard, and then the story of healing and um, the thing about disease is that it sometimes heals itself, can be healed by doctors. But the thing with the compulsion which comes with a demonic element, something which will drag us away from goodness and away from God, it is only God, God's intervention that will change it. Um, and there's a beautiful story of intervention that I just love in the next section where we talk about the calling of Matthew. And Jesus goes on from this healing of the man who was disabled and, forg and forgiving of his sins. And we don't know where he goes, but he walks on from there and he sees a man sitting at a tax collector's booth. <laughs> tax collector's booth. Um, the tax collector was the lowest echelon of Jewish society at the time of Jesus. They were considered traitors because they worked for the Roman government and collected taxes for Rome. And very often they were corrupt. They were um, collecting for themselves. They would skim off the top and they would overcharge people on their taxes. And uh, Rome rewarded them handsomely for being sellouts from Judaism. Now Matthew was a Jew, but he'd, he worked for Rome. And uh, he would have been an outcast of society of, of, the, of the type that would not have been invited to a dinner party would not have been considered a um, sociable company for any respected Jew. And 
he he would certainly not have expected a respected rabbi to speak to him. Even more so, he would not have expected a, a, any rabbi to say the words, follow me. Those words were reserved for those who were the best of the best of Hebrew scholars. The, they were reserved for the ones who showed the most promise in terms of being faithful Jews and faithful exponents of the Tanakh or the Hebrew scriptures. And here was a man as far as you could get from being a teacher. He had chosen a life at odds with Judaism and at odds with what the Pharisees would have believed were the scriptures um, teaching. And here he was sitting at his, his tax collector's booth in the very place of ill repute, if you like. And Jesus says these words, follow me. Now, I, I wonder what he thought at that point. Even more surprising for me than that he heard these words is the next, the response of Matthew. It says he got up and followed him. He got up and followed Jesus. And I wonder what was going on in his mind then. Was he thinking, you know, I hope this is not a joke. I hope he, he does mean it for me. And even though I don't believe he's calling me, uh, am I worthy? He gets up and in faith simply follows Jesus. Now we, we, have, this, we have this daily, this, this dilemma. Is, does Jesus count me worthy? Am I the one? And so many of us struggle with a, a, a self-image that is really low. But the thing here is that Jesus is not in the business at this moment of fixing Matthew's self-image. He is not coming to Matthew and saying, Hey Matthew, you're my guy, you're good. I know you're there in the tax collector's booth, but I kind of you're okay. No. Jesus calls those who are not worthy. Now, I know there's a lot of talk about self-image and and you know loving yourself and so on nowadays. And yeah, this is important, but what Jesus is saying here to us through Matthew is Jesus' call is to those who are not worthy, who do not see the, themselves as worthy. And, and he, he does not call us once we are worthy. He calls us in the tax collector's booth. He calls you in the place where you may feel least like you belong there. And I love it so often, you know, when we speak to people about becoming elders in the church, one of my favorite responses is, you know, I don't think that I'm, I'm mature enough yet, or I don't think that I'm ready to be an elder. You know, when someone says that to me, my instinctive response is, well, that, that means you are ready. The one thing that qualifies for us for service in Jesus' kingdom is that we understand just how ready we are not if that makes sense, is we get how much we need Jesus. Now, this is, this is then, from there, Jesus goes on to, to eat at Matthew's house. He, he was one of Jesus' favorite things. He did it with Zacchaeus as well. He went down and had supper with somebody who was, who was clearly not a, um, a faithful Pharisee and, 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 or a faithful Jew. And he goes to eat with this tax collector and then Sinners come. Now, what's a sinner? A sinner really in def their definition is someone who does not obey the full extent of the law. And somebody who, who doesn't hold the pharisaical law, doesn't um, do all the ritual cleansing and the ritual, um, the, the ritual ceremonies, but they may well be a nice person, a very good person, even in our society, somebody we might respect. But the Pharisees see Jesus eating with these people who are ritually impure, and they say, they say to the disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? In other words, you've got somebody who's teaching you who himself is not even spiritually pure or ceremonially pure. And, well, that is the point, you see. The world will tell us that we are not worthy. The world's mission is to let people in the church know that we are wrong, that we do not have it right. Well, that's okay. Maybe we don't have it right all the time. But Jesus counts us worthy to be his 
disciples. You see, when Jesus goes to eat with the sinners and tax collectors, he, he is not making himself unclean, but he's declaring that God does not see others as unclean or unworthy. He is willing to accept anyone who would come acknowledging that they are unworthy. Now, Jesus' response is just, it really is beautiful. It's so affirming to me. When Jesus says that it is not the healthy you need a doctor, but the sick, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Every Jew would have to sacrifice an offering, sometimes weekly, sometimes monthly, but a sacrifice would be offered every single day, morning, night, for and noon, for the sins of the people of Israel. The Pharisees could claim purity because even if they had committed some small sin, there was a sacrifice for it. And they hadn't committed the big ones, so they were claiming ritual purity. And if they were unclean for any reason, whether it was touching a dead body or having some sort of a reptile touching them or something like that, then they could go and wash and then have, uh, you know, pay a small offering and then be declared pure. But what Jesus is saying is that his heart, Jesus' heart, is about mercy and not sacrifice. If you think that there's something you have to do, maybe it's go to church every Sunday, maybe it's repay somebody a debt that you owed them long ago, Maybe you feel like you need to make an apology to somebody you hurt years and years ago, and they may have even forgotten. Jesus is saying, no, there is no sacrifice that needs to be paid before you come to me or before you are worthy to me. You are worthy because God has chosen to make you worthy. And of course, all of this points forward in Jesus to the cross. The cross of Jesus is, by the, is the thing by which Christians or those who believe in Jesus are made worthy, not because of anything we do. If there was something we could do, then Jesus would not argue with the Pharisees. But our worthiness before God, your worthiness before God, is not because of anything you've done, but only because of the cross of Jesus. That cross of Jesus intervenes in the life of somebody who had sold their very soul to the Roman government in order to be involved in a corrupt network of tax gathering. This is, this is somebody at the heart of corruption of a government which is clearly corrupt. They may not have had ESCOM, but certainly there was deep corruption within the Roman government. And these tax collectors were part of it. And Jesus saying, is saying, the minute you follow me, you become acceptable. The minute you get up and just follow me, you have accepted what I give you, which is mercy. I do not demand a sacrifice. Now, this is hard for many people. Somebody steeped in corruption, suddenly finding themselves in a place where their, their, their sin, their corruption is exposed. They have to pay a dear price for that. And I've often prayed for our government that the, the politicians would find the grace within their soul to, to confess their sin, the, the leaders of our country, in, in order to in order to uplift the country, let's fall on our political sword for the good of the whole country. Let's truly put the country first. Well, I'm not sure that I could do that in their position. So uh, there's no judgment from me. But th that is my prayer, that God would, would find a merciful way, would, would show a merciful way within our country, that, that the leaders of our country would find the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God would open that way so that they too could follow Jesus and find mercy, so that the whole community could be healed. And that's really what happened, isn't it? Jesus goes home to eat with Matthew, and a whole gaggle of other people, sinners and tax collectors, come to have dinner with Jesus. And they know they're worthy before the Lord. The Pharisees, of course, are standing outside, they're just angry because they've done all the right things. But Jesus is showing mercy. That's what we as a church do. Show mercy, and let God just deal with the rest of the muck, whatever it is but be merciful and show the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ in all we do. So may you know that you are worthy, but more than that, may you show mercy to others and include them, draw them in, so that they too would know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the calling of Matthew. Thank you for the, that, that it's a promise that, that I too 
can follow Jesus and know his mercy, that I too can be around him, learn from him, sit at his feet and, and become like him. And so, Father, we pray that whatever it costs us, we would have the courage to, like Matthew, get up and follow Jesus, even if it means that the very corruption of our hearts is exposed, so that others can come and sit at this meal and know the love of the Lord Jesus. We so need you, Lord. Amen.